Hi, you guys. We are so excited to be here. I'm April Beach, and this is my friend Elizabeth McFadden. This is our new show, Scale with Strategy. We are so excited to be bringing this here to you guys on LinkedIn every single week. Hi, everybody. My name is Elizabeth McFadden, and I'm the CEO and Director of Brand Strategy here at Novella Brand House. We are a branding-focused full-surface ad agency, and we're based in Kansas City, Missouri. April and I have been working together for a very long time. We have a lot of fun, and so we've been, as she said, we've been doing this show on Clubhouse. And a number of you have asked, like, when are you going to be in LinkedIn? Like, when are you going to take this off of Clubhouse? And like, where else can we find you? And all those kinds of things. And so we finally got our act together and figured out all the tech. <laughs> anyway, we're excited. So each week we have we start the conversation in Clubhouse and then we bring it here. And um, really the idea behind this is that, you know, you walk away with valuable information, with tips, with some strategies to scale your business. Um, and these are literally tips and strategies that you can start implementing, you know, this week, this month, or this quarter, um, you know, small and large. So today we were talking in Clubhouse, um, April was leading the discussion and she's gonna pick it back up here um, about when do you know when you should hire a business coach? And I started off that conversation with saying, you know, I didn't realize, I mean, I've been a business owner for 16 years. And to be honest, I didn't realize until maybe the last year or two, like how many people have worked or do work with a business coach of some sort. And um, I was really floored by that. And I mean, I totally see the value and, and I have worked with April. Um, she has helped us, as she's been our business coach on our um, sort of our online business in Valley University. And um, so I, I, again, I understand the value, but um, you know, like where do you, how do you start? So. Uh, so we're, we're super excited to be here with you guys. My name is April Beach. I am the founder of The Sweet Life Company, and we help companies, actually experts, thought leaders, consultants, coaches, and niche service-based businesses like Novella Brand House scale online beyond a million dollars. And we do that through engineering uh, online offers and strategies and custom business models. And, and I've been doing that for now coaching businesses for 26 years. And so uh, Elizabeth and I um, have been working with businesses and helping them grow and scale for a really long time. And I'm also a client of Novella's, and, and they take care of our brand strategy for us. And so it's a great relationship. We're super excited to be talking to you guys here, right? So we want to deliver you high value short time. So there's going to be a specific niche strategy or consulting or, you know, coaching topic that we're going to rotate bringing every single week to you guys. So you can get this information and really look at it and either start implementing it right away or put it into a parking lot because you're going to clearly be able to see if you do, or if you don't maybe need to implement this strategy. And so we're really interested in this high value short time for today. One of the things we talked about and what I want to chat a little bit about here today is really what is the difference between a coach and a consultant and a mentor if you google these things it's still kind of a gray and, and fuzzy area so i want to share with you how i break them down how i define them and as a business coach this is how i see these different um, roles to help you determine if you are in this place where you need to grow or you need to press through you know a barrier that you may be having in your business what type of person leader individual do you need to get you to the next level and so i use the word coach loosely and that can apply to consultant or strategy as well just in this case a coach i want you guys to think about it as somebody who leads you along to continue to encourage you to get great results so i immediately think of my kids that play sports right their coach helps them gives them you know tools but also helps to encourage them to keep moving along a coach is usually somebody that you would have a longer term relationship with or it's more than just like a, a one-time shot in the dark you know hour together and it's somebody that really is going to encourage you to continue to grow help you troubleshoot problems as they come along and it's somebody that it engages with you on a continual basis just make sure that you're hiring a very well vet vetted coach with established expertise there's a lot of people out there calling themselves coaches and the only thing they're doing is copying what somebody else told them to do who copied somebody else who copied somebody else the business coaching world is it's like dangerous whereas a consultant is somebody that has a very great specific skill set and that can come in and help look at your problems and help give you strategy to uh, to get past that benchmark, get past that barrier, you know, look at what's specifically happening in your business and actually consult you on how to navigate through that. But they might or might not be hanging out with you for the next six months as you do it. That is the second differentiator between, between usually an ongoing coach and a consultant. And whereas a mentor is somebody who has been where you want to go. So they're slightly ahead of you or more ahead of you in business or whatever area you want to grow in. And that mentor can say, hey, you know what? This is how I dealt with that. These are some of the things that we did and really, truly guide you through that sort of level. Uh, and usually there's somebody who's older than you, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, whereas a coach or a consultant, especially a consultant, 
if they have a very specific skill set that they're giving you strategies in order to execute in your business, they may not be ahead of you in business, but they're really, really good at what they do where they are. Whereas a mentor is somebody who um, really their, their business looks the way you want yours to look, or they have gone through and they've navigated some of the waters that you plan to be sailing through over the next period of time. And you can, of course, find a coach, a consultant, and a mentor. I am all three. So for our clients, I serve as a consultant and a strategist, as a coach, and as a mentor. You'll find that there are some coaches that only want a coach and it doesn't include the strategy, or there are some strategies strategists or consultants that want to give you the strategy and that they are willing to also coach you. Again, as leaders, when we are looking for somebody to lead us, how they do that, in my opinion, is just as important as where they're actually leading us through. How they work with you needs to work with the way that you expect. And the biggest problem that we see is that when people buy help from somebody and they have mismanaged expectations, so when you show up, if you're considering hiring private business leadership, I really in this space, I just want to encourage you guys that that's a conversation that I want you to have. So, you know, do you do you act more as a coach? Are you more of a strategist and a consultant? Will you mentor me as well? And there is no right or wrong way. It's totally up to what you need as a leader. And it's up to, you know, obviously how that how that strategist um, delivers results in, in their scope and how they prefer working with you. Yeah, I'm just going to give some some kind of takeaways um, for everybody. I think, first of all, I love the diff you showed the difference between those three and you're going to need a mentor. You're going to need a coach. You're going to need a consultant for various things and at various points in your journey as a, as a business owner. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned in Clubhouse that I think is really important is that, you know, you said for a lot of people, you know, when they're getting to like 10,000 a month in revenue, that's one thing. But then when they make that jump to like 25, 35, 50,000 in revenue a month, it's a whole different set of issues or things or problems, or even honestly strategy at that point too, of running a business. It's, I mean, owning a business is like playing a game. I've seen, I think it's, is it Simon Sinek? Yeah. Uh, he talks about that. And then um, I was listening to a podcast, or I was listening to How I Built This, um, the woman that started Title IX, um, and she was like a college athlete. And I mean, she said the same thing. She's like, it's like playing a game, you know, there's strategy involved. And so it's just a different level of the game when you're at that 25 to 50,000 in revenue a month, you know, it's different strategies. And so for a lot of people, that's when, you know, a lot of business owners, that's when they need to engage with a coach or a consultant. And anyway, I love how you just broke that down. You need different things for different phases and, and such. I also liked how you, how we were talking about in Clubhouse, you said, look, especially if you're hiring a coach, the best thing you can do is probably try to, you like worked, whatever you're hiring this coach for. And that was your thing you said, be very clear about why you are hiring a coach. It shouldn't just be, well, I want to better my business. That's not enough. It has to be like you, it's very specific what you're looking for. And so, um, and the best thing you can do is to have tried to try to work through that. And you're like probably hitting a wall of some sort or you're falling short or it's just not enough, whatever. And you're like, okay, I've tried to do this. I'm understanding where I'm stumbling. And now I need to bring, I need a, to engage with a coach to help me <clears throat> get that to that next level. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that that was so good to point out because so much of the time people think, you know, oh, this is what I need to do next. And I'm just going to hire a coach. How do you, you almost don't know what you don't know. I um, mean, what we were talking about, and I think this is really important. So when we hire somebody to consult us, we need to take ownership of, there's still our decisions. There are just, there are decisions, you know, we're grown ups. We need to make these decisions. And when somebody comes in and consults us or give us a strategy, we need to take ownership of those decisions. And I feel like it's best. And I've experienced this with my clients as well. The clients that have tried at least on their own to educate themselves and work through problems. And they've, they've dove into it a bit. And so they have that um, understanding of a, a little bit of education, at least those clients get faster results. Whereas a client that didn't even try and they're just like, Hey, forget it. I don't care. I just want you to hire, you know, I want to hire you to help me do this. Um, can we do that? Yes, of course. You know, people pay us for speed, but it's the businesses that have an educational um, foundation in what we're doing that take ownership faster. And the faster that somebody takes ownership of their own strategic decisions in their business, um, that the faster results that they're going to get in that. Sometimes there's a lag time 
when you consult a business that really just frankly has no clue um, where you'll give them the strategies and the recommendations and start working with them in the process. And they have to go through their own their own then period of time to start looking into it, start doing it. And actually, it just it really stretches out the results they're going to get. So I just am an advocate before I hire any mentor or any strategist to work with us. I've already looked into that. I, I've listened to the, the podcast. I've listened to the audible books. You know, I've read things. I've tried to delegate it within our own teams already. Um, and I, I just I am an advocate for that. And I think, frankly, it gives us faster results when we have an, or an area of understanding, at least. Um, and then also, how are we then going to know what done looks like? As business owners, as entrepreneurs, we take ownership of the done. Also, this is also an important point to make when you're interviewing for a business strategist or consultant, your version of what done looks like might be totally different than theirs. And so if you in your mind, you know, because every time we make an investment, we want it to be great investment. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, we have like this Disneyland when in fact, we're, you know, only building the Matterhorn, right? <laughs> with that, with that work, right? So you need to have that conversation with that strategist and say, hey, you know, what is that end result? What is that transformation of me working with you actually going to look like? Because, because in most cases, we as the buyer want to get all the way to Z. But that strategist or consultant based on their methodology may in fact only be able to get you to C or F. And so those are important conversations to have as well. And you can't actually have those conversations until at least you know what the heck you're talking about to some degree. Um, and then the other thing that you made, and, and I'll just land on this because I want to make sure we're respectful for our time in here, is um, yes. So as entrepreneurs, we rock at the creative stuff, right? Like we're starters. We're we're big picture thinkers. Think of Michael Gerber and the Evith. You know, we all usually operate really high in that entrepreneur section, and then pretty great in the technician as well. But it's kind of that manager in the middle that that natural entrepreneurs we kind of struggle at. I totally struggle at that. I'm definitely weak in that area for sure. And so the strategies that get our service based business is what I'm strictly talking. I'm strictly a consultant strategist for service based businesses here. So that's the, that what this refer that is what this refers to but when we use these strategies what gets us to 30k you know monthly reoccurring revenue is a different strategy than what we need to get to 50 and 60k a month because that that creative um you know hustle the things that were happening in the beginning that we needed to do that frankly only you guys can see because you're the creatives, you're the genius, it's your IP, you're excited about it and you wanna extract it from your brain and, and you can build it and you're gonna make it happen. Okay, well now they're a reality and you're at 30 and 35K a month and it's like, okay, so the strategies that we need to get from 30 to 50 to 60K a month and beyond into a million dollar service-based business, a coaching or consulting or a niche expert business, totally different strategies. And that's usually a great point when it's time to bring in a strategist that is an expert in those areas that we need to be great delegators and learn how to give up control. Um, but those strategies, in fact, usually aren't the ones that, that we really need to, to double that and get us to the next level. So in landing and wrapping up here in our uh, scale with strategy, um, if you are looking for a private business co coach, just keep these things in mind. How much money are you making each month? How do you want that coach to actually engage with you and operate? Are they solving a specific problem for you? Um, uh, if you're looking for just the unicorn to come along, maybe try to find a mentor. Maybe if you aren't even sure what you need yet, find a, try to find a mentor who can look into your business who's been there and give you some insight into that as well. Um, so with that being said, this was fun. I don't think we killed the tech. I mean, um, I'm looking. No, I think we're, <laughs> sorry, I can't get your face in there. Um, no, we did it. So what I realized that we forgot is that we should have pinned the link to your awesome worksheet that you shared in Clubhouse oh. um, to the event. So noted, we'll do that next time. And, but how can people get that? So tell them what you shared in Clubhouse, that worksheet, because it was awesome. And how can they get that download? Oh yeah. So I'm here in StreamYard and it says I can't post comments in LinkedIn. I'm going to come back in the event, you guys, and I will post the link to this. So it'll be in the comments here below this event after the event has ended. I did know to add that tool or any, we're always going to bring you guys some sort of a tool each week that you can use to implement right away. And so we'll add that to, to what we're talking about moving forward. Um, so I have 26 coach interview questions. And it's actually just a two page worksheet you guys can download and print. And when you are meeting with somebody that you're considering to guide and lead you, just go through and you can just jot down their answers right there. And yes, there are some very typical questions as far as pricing and payments and guarantees and those things. But there are some questions in there that I think are really important to ask. So as leaders, when we're hiring somebody to lead us, the questions that we ask are, are a little bit different than just really surface level for the end result and the transformation you guys expect. And those questions um, I have here in the coach interview question cheat sheet. It's like 26 coach interview questions. So I'll make sure that's in here for you guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So if, if anybody has any other questions, you can hit April up directly here on LinkedIn and uh, we'll be back next week. We're talking, so I'll be leaving next week and we're talking about 
um, launching a successful brand. So I'm really excited about that. It'll be a good one. And all kind of through the lens of, you know, you're a scaling company or you're planning to scale and what that looks like. So, um, okay, we did it. We didn't kill it. <laughs> didn't all right. It. Okay. okay. All right. Bye, you guys. Bye.